We have a, um, a good question, really. Uh, you know, in Numbers 23, 19, the Lord says that uh, he is not the son of man that he uh, will repent. But, uh, you know, as you know, there are passages, for instance, the flood and other places where it gives the impression that God repented. So there is a tension here. Uh, yeah. How would you um, deal with so that? So what is he saying? What's the exact objection? Uh, the tension uh, in terms of that God repented from a decision that he was going to make with Moses, for instance, sure. or he was going to There's make. There's no problem. Yeah. That passage is talking about that God doesn't arbitrarily change his mind. Meaning, when human beings change their minds, they do so arbitrarily, capriciously, without any just grounds to doing so. For doing so, right? Right. For example, you know, well, I want example I give you. I can give you too many. Oftentimes, when we change our minds, it's not for just reasons. It's either out of selfish motives, because you know what? If I do this, you know, there's no gain for me. So why should I do it? I won't do it. So the text is saying God is not like a man who lies what because it benefits him or arbitrarily, capriciously changes his mind if it benefits him. That's not what God does. But the passage is not saying that, quote unquote, God won't repent in any sense, because you have to understand what it means for God to repent. And I'm going to prove it from Scripture. So let me first explain what the passage is actually saying. God is not like human beings, fallen, tainted, corrupted, who will lie if it's going to benefit them. Because human beings who are curved towards themselves, who are self-centered, they do things out of ulterior motives for benefit. So if lying will benefit me, either it will give me an advantage over you or get me out of trouble, I'm going to lie because I don't give a damn about you. It's all about me. Or if changing my mind will benefit me because if I decide to do something that has no benefit of me but benefits you, what the hell? I'm not going to do it. Let me change my mind. That's what God is saying. That's what God is saying here. I don't do that. But it doesn't mean God, quote unquote, doesn't repent or change his mind. Because when God, quote unquote, changes his mind, it's always for just reasons. What do I mean? Let me ask you guys a question. I want you to answer this question. And then I'm going to show you scripture from it. If God says to a people, I'm going to destroy you for your wickedness. But then the people out of fear turn to God, repent and beg God for mercy. Because now they have a change of heart and they turn away from their evil and now want to fear the Lord. And God goes ahead. And then destroys them anyway, anyway, because he doesn't change his mind. Is God acting in justice? Or is that God being unjust and merciless? What do you say? Is God unjust and merciless when he does that? Yep, Nineveh, the my ancestors, the Assyrians. 40 days and the great sin in Nineveh will be destroyed. They repented and God changed his mind from destroying them. All right. Let me ask you a follow-up question, and I'm going to give you where I'm getting this from. If God says to a nation, I will bless you and prosper you because you're righteous in my sight. But then all of a sudden that nation turns against God, rejects God's commands, right? Rejects the Bible. In fact, now mocks the Bible and God's rules like America's doing. If God continues to bless that nation, is God acting in justice? Is God being just and righteous? Or is he now rewarding evil? Filth immorality, which goes against his nature. Well, obviously, if God continues to then prosper a nation that's now turned against him and defied him and perverts his will and engages in morality and evil, then God is no longer just for blessing that nation. So now God has to change his mind and repent from blessing them and bring destruction on them because that's what they deserve because they changed their course of action. So this actually shows not that God changes because he's imperfect, but God has no choice but to change if he's consistent with himself. A holy God cannot continue to bless a nation that turns away from him and defies him because his holiness demands stop blessing them and punishing them. And a merciful, loving God cannot go ahead and destroy a nation because of their sin, if they repent and truly cry out to him and fear him, because then that means he's not merciful or compassionate. So therefore, God's changing his mind or repenting is actually proof that God is consistent with himself and his nature is unchangeable 
because a just God cannot continue to punish a nation that now turns to him and cries out to him for forgiveness if he's merciful. And a holy God can't continue to bless a nation that turns away from righteousness and defies him. So that's actually proof of God being consistent, not inconsistent or double-minded. Where am I getting this from? Now, brother, go read Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 5 to 11. All right, verse 5 reads, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Am I not able, house of Israel, to deal with you as this potter does? declares the Lord. Behold, like the clay in a potter's hand, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. At one moment I might speak concerning a nation or concerning a kingdom to uproot it, to tear it down, or to destroy it. If that nation against which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I plan to bring on it. See, if they relent from evil, I'll relent from destroying them. That's right. Keep going. Or at another moment, I might speak concerning a nation or concerning a kingdom to build up or to plant it. If it does evil in my sight by not obeying my voice, then I will relent of the good with which I said that I would bless it. So if they turn away from righteousness, I'll relent, repent from blessing them because now they deserve destruction. Keep going. Just like uh, what happened with his people, the exile. So yep. now speak to the men of Judah and against the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, This is what the Lord says. Behold, I am forming a disaster against you and devising a plan against you. Now turn back each of you from his evil way and correct your ways and your deeds. So now God is warning them. Say, look, like clay... I can fashion you for destruction or fashion you for prosperity. It's up to you now. So I'm letting you know I'm fashioning destruction because of your sin. But I don't want to destroy you, so I'm going to give you time to repent. And if you repent, I'll repent from destroying you. Sadly, they didn't listen. They went ahead. He goes, now I'm going to have to destroy you. So you see, the answer actually proves that God is consistent. A consistent God whose nature doesn't change cannot continue to bless you if you turn away from him and defy him and engage in immorality. A consistent God whose nature doesn't change cannot destroy you if you've been convicted and you fear the Lord and turn to the Lord and truly repent. Because if he's merciful, he'll show mercy to those who seek mercy. And if he's just, he will bring punishment on those who turn from him and defy him. So this is actually proof that the way God treats a nation, he does so depending on how they respond to him and he will do so in a manner that is perfectly consistent with his unchangeable nature. So ironically, God turning away from blessing a nation that's become wicked is proof he doesn't change. And God refraining from destroying a nation who's repented proves he doesn't change. It's ironic, isn't it? But anyway, I hope that answered the question.